Hi and welcome back. I started the last video talking about how anytime we look at the news nowadays, we see headlines about some sort of new feat of artificial intelligence. Sometimes good, sometimes bad, sometimes funny, and sometimes creepy or even scary. Then I explained what is AI, the different types of AI that exist, and which one is responsible for the AI hype of the last couple of decades. I ended the video saying that developments in machine learning are driving most of the progress we have been seeing in AI, including some of the issues highlighted in those headlines. Today, we'll pick up where we left off. For those of you who don't know me yet, my name is Carmen Dominguez, I'm a data scientist, and today we'll talk about this mysterious machine learning. We'll understand how it relates to artificial intelligence, how it's fueling the recent AI hype, and not without causing some issues along the way. And finally, as promised in the previous video, when we can expect robots to take over from humans. If you still haven't seen the last video, I suggest you watch that one first. It's really short, but it will help you understand what we're talking about here, otherwise it may be a little bit confusing. So the link to it is in the card above and in the description of this video as well. If you're watching this on a desktop, you can pause this real quick and then open the link in another tab and then come back to this one when you're done. If you're watching it on mobile, don't worry. At the end of the AI video, I link back to this one so you can get right back. All right, so what is machine learning and where does it come in? Back to the Oxford Dictionary. To learn means to gain or acquire knowledge or skill in by study, experience, or being taught, to commit to memory, or to become aware of something by information or from observation. Machine learning involves training a computer to learn or to become more accurate at predicting outcomes, but without being explicitly programmed on what to output in every circumstance. In other words, it's training a computer to predict or infer new output values by itself based on previous input data, observations, or experience. Expert systems, for example, may be considered AI if they include a lot of expert knowledge to offer advice or make decisions, but they're not machine learning since they're not learning from the data. Let's say you develop a system to diagnose diseases. You get a series of experts to provide a lot of information about the different symptoms someone may exhibit for a set of diseases. You then develop an algorithm that asks the person which symptoms he or she has, and based on their answers, the AI diagnoses them. So for example, Let's say the patient has symptoms A, B, and C. The algorithm then determines the diagnosis X. In this case, your symptom knowledge base is static. It's not learning the output from the data. Rather, it determines the diagnosis from a set of rules or if-else statements provided to it by a human being. That may be AI since a machine is applying knowledge, which was provided to it by a human, to generate an output, but it's not machine learning. Now let's say you develop your algorithm such that with each new patient that uses your system, its knowledge base is updated to include that patient's information as well as a doctor's diagnosis. Then the system uses this growing knowledge base to make diagnosis in the future. So instead of you coding the algorithm such that if a patient has symptoms A, B, and C that diagnosis X, you train it to analyze all the data across all patients and then it learns that symptoms A, B, and C and perhaps D match diagnosis X. That is machine learning. The algorithm was programmed such that it learns how to make predictions with the data it is given, without you having to specify which symptoms match which diagnosis, as we did in the previous example. So all machine learning is AI, but not all AI is machine learning. It might help to think in terms of a Venn diagram. Remember those from back in school? You usually had two or more sets of things, each with their own characteristics, and then the intersection between them showed the, the characteristics that apply to both. Remember those? So let's make one for AI. Here, the largest set is AI, which is all machines that can apply knowledge. Then within that, you have the machine learning subset, which is machines that besides applying knowledge, they can go a step further and learn from the data. Make sense? So within machine learning, you have different types of models and algorithms that enable machines to learn. Recently, the most hyped up ones are neural networks and deep learning. So how is machine learning driving the AI boom? Performance. Let's look at the relationship between the amount of data processed by different types of AI and their performance, or accuracy, meaning how good are the predictions made. Let's drop another diagram to help us out. Here we have the amount of data increasing as we go right on the x-axis and performance increasing as we go up on the y-axis. Traditional forms of AI tend to increase in performance up to a certain point, but then the performance tends to level off. Then with the advent of traditional machine learning algorithms and increased processing power, AI systems allowed for larger datasets to be used and generally perform better than traditional AI. Think of the machine learning versus the expert system of diagnosis that we just discussed. Eventually, neural networks and deep learning, which are types of machine learning algorithms that need even more data and processing power, were developed and performance got even better. So remember how earlier I said that the AI winter happened because there was not enough computing power to get the level of performance needed to keep people excited and then money flowing to AI? 
From this graph, we see that generally speaking, the more data used to train the machine learning algorithms, the better their performance. So basically, the more computer and processing power we have, the more data we can collect and use, which means the more learning we can do and the better performances we get. So if you see, it's a snowball effect. The better performance, the more money invested, the more advances in processing algorithms can be made, which in turn produce even better performance, which then brings more money and so on and so forth. So it's no wonder that companies want more and more data to improve the performance of the algorithms so they can make more money. And where did they get it? From a lot of places, including from us. That's right, you and I. So it's not surprising that we have all become data generating machines, feeding companies the data that they need to develop and improve the performance of their machine learning algorithms through every interaction that we have online and more and more offline too. I'll talk more about data in another video, so stay tuned. So when are the robots coming? Basically, we have been seeing a lot of progress in artificial narrow intelligence, or ANI, the specific targeted applications of AI. This is mostly driven by advances in machine learning techniques, but despite being called narrow, they are still quite impactful. But we've been seeing very little in artificial general intelligence, AGI, or the concept of super machines that are as smart as, or even smarter than humans. The way I see it, to get to AGI, we need to master all the many different types of ANI that could then start being combined into something that actually resembles human intelligence. For machines to be able to truly learn and drive inferences as humans do, they need to pick up on visual, verbal, and body language cues, be able to interpret emotions, think abstractly and creatively, and develop self-awareness and so much more. And let's face it, even we humans are not always very skilled at all of these. And whereas it's true that we are seeing significant process in different aspects of these things with ANI, we are far off mastering any of them, much less all of them, which will be needed to achieve the so-called super intelligence. Even picking up sarcasm and irony in text, for example, is still extremely difficult for machines. So imagine full-blown human intelligence. Now, since the early days of AI, claims have been made time and again that we are only a few years away from machines that would surpass human intelligence. Clearly, all of these claims have time and again failed to deliver. So if you worry about evil robots coming after us, don't be. We're still quite a ways from that. Does that mean we're completely off the hook then and AI is all well and good? Not quite. There are circumstances where machine learning algorithms and AI are causing real problems, partially because of the way algorithms are being developed, partially because of the data being used to train them, and partially because of a lack of understanding by the people employing them in real life. They often don't understand what is AI, how it works, and what are the caveats associated with each algorithm and use case, and there are plenty. The headlines I showed in the last video and the beginning of this one exemplify this. Some of the most serious cases are in policing, because they can literally destroy someone's life. But I'll talk more about that later. In the next videos, I'll talk about what is this data that we're generating daily, how companies are using them to train the algorithms, and how the computers actually learn from it. So stay tuned. Understanding this a bit better will help us understand the uses and misuses of AI across the board. That's it for today, guys. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and leave your comment below. See you in the next one. Bye.